Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Today is the day that the Lord has made. And I am so glad, so glad to be a part of it and enjoy seeing it. I want to say thank y'all today, my brothers. Thank y'all today, my sisters. Thank y'all today, every boy and girl around the world today. Thank y'all for being part of today's service today. I tell you what, God is about to do some amazing things today. God has a word today. God has a message today for every last one y'all today. So I hope that y'all are ready for today's word. I hope that y'all are ready for today's message today because God is about to speak to somebody today in an amazing way because someone needs to hear this today. I don't know who it is, but... God is laid on my heart about it. He's really not moved by a lot of y'all right now today because it's because of y'all faith. It's something that y'all not doing with y'all faith. So God is about to speak to somebody right now today. So today, my sister, today, my brothers, y'all need to get ready to receive this word. Get ready to receive this message. Get ready for God is about to show up and show up right now today. Just get ready how God is about to move in this place today. Amen. Amen. So I always thank him for who he is. I thank him for what he's done. I thank him for what he's doing. Each and every day, I got to thank him. I got to worship him. I got to glorify him. I put my faith, I put my trust, and I put my hope in God each and every day that I know that he's still on the right hand of the throne. He's still performing miracles and wonders each and every day. That's why I thank him the way I do. That's why I praise him the way I do. That's why I glorify the way I do. I just don't start thinking just because I receive a good news. I don't think because I receive a good letter. I thank him during the good times. I thank him during the bad times. I thank him when things not adding up. I thank him when things not making sense. I thank him when things are still looking so dark and so bleak. I thank him because God is my everything. God is my comfort. He's my shield. He's my protector. He's my healer. He's my provider. God is my best friend. He is the one that I seek when I need answers. He's the one that asks for guidance. He's the one that asks for direction. He's the one that I ask for help each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. And I know right now today that some of you right now today that you are going through something right now today. And right now you're walking down with your head down. You're pouting. You're all upset. My sisters, my brothers, one thing that you need to do right now today. Instead of you walk around upset, instead of you walk around blaming the world, you need to open up your mouth right now today and start giving Jesus some thanks right now. You need to open up your mouth right now today and give Jesus some praise right now because you can't worry and praise. What is worry going to do? Worry is not going to solve the problem. Worry is not going to fix the problem. But one thing I do know, once you start opening up your mouth, you start thanking him, you start praising him, automatically you're giving Jesus an invitation to handle the problem. And automatically you're giving Jesus an invitation to handle your situation for you. So if you're not doing that, only thing, only thing that you was doing is hurting yourself. Stop hurting yourself. Stop beating yourself up and open up your mouth right now today and give Jesus the thanks right now. Give him the praise right now and give him the glory in the house of the Lord right now. Amen? Amen. I say God is good all the time and all the time God is good. I say God is good all the time and all the time God is good. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And he is worthy to be praised. I want to say thank you to all my sisters, my brothers, and every boy and girl around the world today. Thank y'all for taking y'all time out out of y'all busy schedule today to be part of today's service today. Thank y'all that y'all guys in the treat. Y'all guys are in the treat today. You better receive a, a Norton word, a Norton message that's coming from my Heavenly Father God. And words cannot explain how thankful I am, how grateful I am, how honored I am, how blessed I am, because you took your time out, out of your busy schedule to be part of today's service. I want to say thank y'all from the bottom of my heart. Thank y'all guys for being part of my life and path, and I'm so thankful that I'm part of y'all guys' life and path. It's because of y'all, that's why this ministry is still on air, that's why it's still growing each and every day. Thank y'all so much. So if I'm thankful and I'm grateful and honored and blessed, how much more do you think our Heavenly Father God is? He is so thankful right now today that he is doing something new right now in your life. And you probably say, well, minister LG, how do you know that? Well, if you turn your Bible to Isaiah chapter 43, verses 18 through 20, when you're putting him first place, when you're seeking him, all the magic word of God says he is doing something new. And that's what he's doing right now. He's doing something new in your life. He's doing something new in your marriage. He's doing something new in your homes. He's doing something new in your health, your finances, and your dreams right now today. 
My brothers and sisters, y'all about to get ready because God is about to do some new things in your life. Get ready to receive some new news in your life. Get ready to receive a new blessing in your life, a new miracle in your life. Get ready to see some uh, some new connections, some new resources. Just get ready to receive something new that's coming from your Heavenly Father God. And I'm speaking this thing to an existence. I'm prophesizing over it right now today. I'm speaking over every dry bone in the mighty name of Jesus that I know for a fact, that I know for a fact that this year, this season, in 2019, God will do something new in your life. And if you believe that God's going to do something new, shout out something new that's coming my way because it is. Get ready. God is an awesome God. He's an amazing God. He's a faithful God and he is an on time God. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is there anyone out there in the world today? I mean anyone right now. If you are really, really ready to give your life to Christ right now, I boldly encourage you right now today to please step out on faith and please head to the altar right now today. Is there anyone out there in the world today that want to be used by God? And you have read the contract correctly. When I say the contract, this is the contract right here. And you understand what's, what the procedures are. And you, read, and you want to be used. Please step out on faith and head to the altar right now today. Is there anyone out there in the world today that's been looking for a church home? And you've been looking, you've been looking, you've been searching, you've been searching. But yet, you haven't found anything yet. But there's something telling you about this ministry right here. There's something telling you about Jesus' ministry. There's something telling you, telling you that you belong right here. And if you do, all you got to do is hit Jesus' little red subscribe button right now today. It's not my button. It's his button. It's not my ministry. It's his ministry. It's not my platform. It's his platform. But I do promise you one thing, that God will have a word for you. That God will have a message for you. And I promise you as your pastor, we're going to pray together. We're going to worship together. We're going to fellowship together. We're going to lift each other up together. And we're going to help each other because we are brothers and sisters. We're going to bond together. We're going to do whatever it takes together. Because that's what God expects out of every last one of his children. And if there's a prayer or a prayer request that you want me to preach on or pray about, you let me know it's something that you're going through. Because right now, a lot of us right now today, we're going through things, but we're really not being real with ourselves. We are keeping this burden. We are keeping this pain deep down inside, and, we, and you really need to let it out. And if you really need, if you really need to let it out, please let me know. I will give you my email address, and we can talk about the problem right then and now. We're going to continue to lift each other up in prayer. Amen. Amen. Is there anyone out there in the world today that's been going through a lot of pain lately, a lot of suffering lately? You've been an emotional wreck lately. You've been this depressed lately and you think nobody cares for you. You feel like there's nobody knows what you're going through, that you're in this situation all by yourself and you feel like you're in a, you're in a battle by yourself that there's nobody who loves you. My brothers, my sisters, you're wrong. There is someone who cares for you. There is someone who want to help you. There is someone who knows exactly what you're going through right now today. And his name is Jesus. How do I know that? If you turn your Bible to 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Jesus' words say, cast everything on him right now today. He didn't say cast a little bit of it. He didn't say cast some of it. He said cast everything on him right now today. So right now, Jesus is telling you to cast that pain on him right now, that anxiety right now today, that emotional stress right now today, that depression right now today, whatever it is that got you bowled up right now today, whatever it is that got you crying right now today, Jesus said cast it on him right now today and let him take care of the problem for you. No longer do you have to take care of the situation no more. He said, you've been carrying around with you way too long. He said, give it to me and let me take care of it right now today. Do yourself a favor and give it to him right now today. And I speak on this each and every day because a lot of God kids each and every day still haven't got right with they self. You still procrastinate each and every day. You thinking life is a joke. You are treating life like it's a checkers game. And what I mean by that is, a lot of you right now today, you know exactly who you are. You have not asked Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior Christ. What are you waiting on? Till it's time to go? Because when it's time to go, there's nothing you can do about it. The Word of God tells us that nobody knows the time, the day, or the hour when something's going to happen. And right now, something 
tragically just happened right now today. There's some people right now today that's fighting, barely hanging on for their life in the hospital right now as we speak. But we are praying for them right now today for a speedy recovery so they can get back home. And I promise you one thing I know for sure, one thing I know for a fact, when God gives you a second chance at life, the first thing you're going to do is that you're going to get real with yourself and that you're going to get right with God first of all. The Word of God tells us that tomorrow's not promised to neither one of us. Not next week, not next month, or even not next year. And if you have not asked Jesus to come into your life to be your Lord and Savior Christ, today is the day that you need to open your mouth. Today is the day that you need to boldly confess. Don't worry about the haters. Don't worry about the naysayers. Don't worry about how people are looking at you, what they think about you, how they feel about you. You need to get real with yourself right now today. You need to get right with God right now today because when it's too late, it's too late. And all you got to say is, Lord Jesus, today is the day I'm getting real with myself. Today is the day I'm getting right with you right now today, God. And I'm asking you right now today to come into my life to be my Lord and Savior Christ. And once you boldly confess that, right then and there, you're saved. You're born again. You have just accepted and received the Holy Spirit. And I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus that the angels right now today are rejoicing right now today because someone has got right with themselves. Someone has got real with themselves. I'm not here to build a church up. I'm here to help the lost soul. Why you think Jesus preached so much outside of the temple? Why you think the 12 disciples preach outside of the temple? Because that's where the lost souls are at. And if you need help confessing it, please let me know and we can do this thing together. Amen. Amen. Are y'all ready for some church today? I say, are y'all ready for some praise today? Are y'all ready for God to move in your life right now today? Because that was exactly what he about to do. Get ready for this anointing that God is about to shift on you right now today. My sisters, my brothers, every boy and girl in the world. Because right now today, God is about to speak to somebody right now today. God is about to tell somebody it's something that you're not doing. And God said, I can't move on something that's not movable. God said, I can't move for something that is dead so right now you need to get your mind right you need to get your act right and let and put some and put some action behind what god is telling you what you need to do today amen amen before i get started can we please pray together oh heavenly father god I just can't thank you enough for this awesome and beautiful blessed day I can't thank enough for this word. I can't thank enough for this message. I can't thank enough right now today, oh Heavenly Father God, what you about to do in our life. Thank you for you moving in our life today. Thank you how you about to shift things in our life right now today. Oh Heavenly Father God, is in your mighty name right now today to watch over us right now, to protect us and shield us and cover us with your wings and your feathers and cover with the blood of the Lamb. Father God, I ask you right now today in your name to lift us up right now today, to touch us and heal us in every area that we need to be healed at. Father God, you know exactly what we need. You know exactly what we're going through. Father God, we know that we can't do it alone. So, Father God, we are asking for your help. We are trusting for your help, Father God. Oh, Father God, we ask you to do some miraculous miracles in our life right now today. As we in your presence right now today, Father God. Father God, we ask that your angels to join us in praise right now today. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in our home right now. Holy Spirit, we ask you to do something different in our life right now today. Holy Spirit, we asking you right now today to speak your small, still, soft voice in our ears right now today. Continue to guide us. Continue to direct us because we cannot do it alone. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. And before I get started. I always like to take the time out to give our Heavenly Father God all the thanks, all the praise, and all the glory. Oh, Heavenly Father God, this can't thank you enough for an awesome and beautiful blessed day today. I can't thank you enough for this word. I can't thank you enough for this message. I just can't thank you enough for the air that we're able to breathe right now today. I can't think of our health right now. I can't think of our strength right now. I can't think of the food that you have blessed and prepared our table with now, right now. I can't think of the clothes and shoes that you put on that back. I just can't think how you cover us right now today. I just can't think how you protect us right now today. I can't think how you sugar us right now today. I just can't think how you providing right now today. I can't think how you moving mouths on our behalf right now today. I just can't think of our blessing right now, our breakthrough right now, our healing right now. I 
have deliverance right now. I can't think of our double portion right now. I can't think of our abundance or overflow right now. I can't think of our more than enough right now. I can't think of the open doors right now. I can't think of the door that you have closed. I just can't think of your miracles. I just can't think of your grace and your mercy. I just can't thank you enough, Jesus. 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 I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I put my faith in you every day, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I trust you the way I do, because I can't thank you enough. I just 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 can't thank you enough. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen. God says that reason he can't move in your life right now today. The reason why he can't move in certain areas in your situation right now today because your faith is not where it should be at right now today. Jesus says that he hear a lot of y'all talking the talk, but you're not walking the walk. And we all know by the word of God, not my words, but God's word said, faith without work is, the, is dead. And a lot of you right now today, you walk around with dead faith right now today. And you wonder why you haven't seen things happen the way they need to be happening. Because you have not put no action behind your faith at all. Jesus can't do nothing with that. Only thing he can do is just look at it and say, you are not ready. You don't want it bad enough. You talking about it, but you really don't want it bad enough. And that was exactly what a lot of you doing right now today. You really don't want it bad enough. As you say that you want it bad enough. Because one thing I know, if you want something bad enough, you're going to try to do whatever it takes to get it done. And right now, you are not doing that. So God is speaking right now today and say, faith requires action. Without no action, there's no faith at all. So what do you have what the next person don't have? I tell you what, a lot of people have something that you don't have. And what they have, they have action behind their faith because they are putting up what they're talking about. Not only they talking the talk, they also are walking the walk. That's why God is able to do certain things in their life. That's why God's able to move in that life. God can move through live faith. He can't move through dead faith. He can't move through still faith. He can't move through that. He can't do nothing with that. Some of y'all only thing y'all looking at is the frame. God want to make sure are y'all looking at the big picture. The frame is what it is, a frame. But if you don't have a picture inside that frame, you don't have no faith whatsoever. Anybody can have a frame. But do you have a picture in that frame? And if you don't have a picture in that frame, you don't have faith at all, my brothers my sisters. I'm going to be honest with you. You really don't. Amen? Amen. So can you please turn your Bibles to James 2. And we're going to read verses 14. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. Let's begin. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? See what he's saying? He said, what good is it, my brothers, if a man claims, like what y'all do, y'all claim to have faith but has no deeds? He means that you have no action. So what good is that faith if you don't have action? What good is that faith if you ain't talking to talk or walking the walk? What good is faith if you ain't making it, if you ain't going over and beyond for God to do anything in your life? What good is it? It's don't, it don't do God no good at all. And it's not doing y'all no good whatsoever neither. Right? Right. Can such faith save him? Suppose a brother or sister is without clothes or daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, but there's nothing about his physical need. What good is it in the same way by faith by itself? It is not accompanied by action is dead. 
And right now, that's what you have. You have dead, still faith. And that's why God can't do nothing with that. That's why God's not moving the way he's moving. That's why God's not acting the way he's acting. That's why God is not doing a lifting the finger right now today. Because what good is faith if you don't have action behind that? He can't do nothing with that. You have to have action behind faith. Faith requires. It's a requirement for action behind your faith. Without that, it is dead. It is impossible to move God. God can't move nothing right now in your life. Right now, y'all have a big mountain that's right there in the front of you, and you're spending God. God needs you to move it. God said, I can't move nothing with that because you ain't got no action behind that. He said, you ain't even putting up behind that, so how can I move it? I can move it because I'm God, but if you ain't putting up behind it, I'm not going to do all the work. And you sit there and still and reap the benefits. It don't work that way. God said, you got to meet me halfway. You got to put up something. He said, I don't care about a small little bit of faith, a small little action, but you got to put up something if you want me to move. You think I'm going to do all the work while you reap the benefits, and that was exactly what some of y'all think God is doing right now today. You want God to do everything while you sit back and chill and receive all the benefits and receive all the blessings, receive all the breakthrough. God say, I'm not going to do it that way. Because if I'm doing that way, that means that you really don't need me. God said, you got to show me, you got to put up and show me what you're all about. Either you're going to talk the talk or walk the walk. Which one are you going to do? And a lot of you right now, today, you're just doing a lot of talking, but you have no walk behind your talking whatsoever. You're doing a lot of walking, but you have no talk behind that walk. It can't be one out of two. It has to be two out of two, my sisters. It has to be two out of two, my brothers. That's the only way that God can do something with your faith. Amen? Amen. And right now, we'd love y'all to turn y'all back to the second reading that we're about to go to. And we're about to go to uh, Romans. Can you please turn your Bible to Romans 14? And we're going to read 22 to 23. It's Romans 14, and we're going to read verses 22 through 23. If you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. And let's begin. So whatever you believe about these things, keep between yourself and God. Blessed is the man who does not condemn himself for what he approves. But the man who has doubts is condemned if he eats because his eating is not from faith. Everything does not come from faith and sin. And right now, today, a lot of y'all right now don't realize that you are sinning because you don't have faith. Right now, a lot of you right now today don't realize you're sinning because you're not putting action behind that faith. Right now today, a lot of y'all are sinning because God has blessed every last one of his children with a gift. A gift that you ain't had to work for, a gift that you ain't had to pray for, a gift that you ain't have to sow a seed for. If you're not using that gift, you are sinning because that is normally that's what it's called faith. God said, use that gift. God said, I will make room for that gift. So right now, a lot of you right now, they don't even realize that you are sinning. You are sinning. God said, if you put up some faith, I'm going to take care of you. If you put some action behind it, I'm going to help you. But if you're not doing that, you are sinning under God. And a lot of you right now, they don't even realize you are sinning right now today. My brothers, my sisters, you need to open up your eyes. Faith requires action. Faith requires action. So what do you have that what certain people doesn't have? I tell you what, what some of these people have. If you turn your Bible to Genesis 32, verses 22, Jacob has something. Jacob put action behind his faith. He left his wife behind, his kids, and his maidservants. Jacob easily could have walked away after God touched his hip. He easily could have said, you know what, God, you don't hurt me. Now nah, I'm no good. But Jacob said, no, even though that you hurted me, I'm not letting you go until you bless me. What did Jacob do? 
Jacob put ashen behind his face. And once God noticed that Jacob had ashen behind his face, once God noticed that Jacob had ashen behind his face, God said, I got to bless you. I got to get you what you want because you showed me that you wanted this blessing. You didn't allow me to put all the work. You put action behind that faith. So that's why Jacob got blessed the way that he got blessed. Look at the Canaanite woman. After Jesus told her no three times. She could have turned away when Jesus said no the first time. But she stood there. She could have turned away when Jesus said no the second time. She could have turned away when Jesus said no the third time, but she still stood right there. She said, no, even the dogs eat crumbs up the ground. And once Jesus knew that she had action behind her faith, if you don't believe me, turn your Bible to Matthew 15, verses 21 through 28. You will see that the Canaanite woman had action behind her faith. Look at the persistent widow. The judge kept telling her no. Kept telling her, she could have turned around and said, you know what? All oh, the answers don't always know. But she took that note and said, you know what? I'm not taking no for an answer. I want justice and I deserve